The 51st sessions of the UN Human Rights Council will continue until the 7th of October. During the sessions on Sri Lanka, the progress made in reconciliation and accountability and further options for advancing accountability will be discussed. A Sri Lankan delegation including Foreign Minister President's Council Ali Sabri and Minister of Justice President's Council Vijay Dasa Rajapaksa are currently in Geneva to attend the sessions. Meanwhile, a group of special representatives from the Samagijana Balavegia, including parliamentarians Dr. Kavind Jayawadana, Mujiba Rahman and attorney at law Eranda Valianga have also travelled to Geneva to attend the sessions. We hope to discuss the fact that the victims of the April 21st attacks did not get justice for three years now. The people of our country are suffering economically. We need international support. Therefore, we hope to direct the attention of the international community on the hardships faced by Sri Lankans. We as the main opposition party are ready to provide leadership in holding discussions with senior officials of the UNHRC to help build the economy of this country and also establish democracy, social justice and the rule of law. Attorney at law Noan Bopage is also in Geneva to attend the sessions. Meanwhile, various views were expressed regarding the position of Sri Lanka at Geneva. Yesterday I saw that some people had gone to Geneva. They are going to Geneva to betray the country. Now they are trying to latch on to another topic. All these people who went there are working against our country. However, the opposition says that they have to exert this pressure on the government to protect the people of Sri Lanka as the government has taken away the people's right to live. Generally, only matters concerning human rights violations are discussed here. But for the first time in history, the economic crimes committed by the government have been included in the resolution. Besides the matters that were included in the past, the manner in which the government destroyed the economy has also been included in the resolution. The destruction of the economy is also considered a crime because the entire world knows that about 60 to 70 percent of the aid loans that Sri Lanka got had been redeposited in foreign banks. There are attempts to strangle Sri Lanka at Geneva. These are issues that can be resolved through discussions. When Joseph Stalin was arrested, he was released soon. Now Lahiru Veera Sekara has been arrested. That has stopped to a certain degree. We also proposed to the government to end the matter surrounding the arrest of Damita Beratna and grant her bail instead of taking these matters to Geneva. All political parties have a duty to ensure that Sri Lanka does not get caught in the noose of the Geneva Human Rights Council. The National Trade Union Centre is of the stance that politicians who looted the public funds and destroyed the country's economy cannot represent the country at the United Nations Human Rights Sessions. The world has acknowledged that the politicians in Sri Lanka are corrupt thieves and scammers. When these matters are being discussed at the UN Human Rights Council, can any of these politicians go there and speak without any shame? Have they taken any measures against this? Has even one thief been apprehended? Are these politicians attempting to provide any concessions to the people at the time that the country is suffering? Instead, they are stealing from the fuel shipments and the coal shipments that are coming to the country. These politicians have brought shame to our country in the face of the world. The United Nations Human Rights Council will be discussing on the need for Sri Lanka to focus on taking steps to punish the corrupt politicians who are responsible for stealing public assets. Will this Ranil Rajapaksha corrupt government throw any of these politicians in prison instead of awarding their ministerial portfolios? So when these matters are being discussed at the Human Rights Council, can these politicians go there and speak without any shame? Can Ranil Vikramasinghe go and address the United Nations Human Rights Council? Can the Minister of Justice address the Human Rights Council? The entire world knows that they are thieves, but they are not ashamed. They have lost their shame.